Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. From headquarters, it's a 1933 mystery. A police detective takes on a case and ends up pursuing the murderer of a blackmailer. So you've just sat down to watch a nice flick. And next thing you know this stupid advertisement interrupts. The one, was bad enough. But then, another. Try our super drug, silopresbutinazone benzidinizer. Side effects include paralysis, vomiting, blindness, amnesia, convulsions, cancer and sudden death. Then still another. Get what's coming to you. Call 1-800-SCAM. Get taken advantage of. Einstein, Shyster and Associates. We know you don't want your movie disrupted by a lot of nonsense. Nope. So instead of ads to pay our expenses, we've chosen to receive your donations instead. No pressure at all. Just an option you might want to consider. Every little bit helps. Look for the donation link in this video's description below. We appreciate your support. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the corridors of mystery take us to 1944 for a Republic release, Secrets of Scotland Yard. During World War I, Room 40 was a British code-breaking operation. Germany blamed their losing the war on Room 40. Well, after the war, Germany placed a spy in Room 40. Twenty years later, that spy is above suspicion when World War II breaks out. So this time, Room 40 is proving to be more useful to the Germans than to the British. A cryptographer's son is in school in Germany. He and another German boy write to each other in code and this proves to be a significant feature in this movie. The boy's cryptographer father is murdered, supposedly by the British spy. What do the British do now? This movie was based on a short story by Denison Clift. He was born in San Francisco in 1885, educated at Stanford, and made a living as a writer. He wrote movie screenplays and he directed movies in both the U.S. and the U.K. He died in 1961 at the age of 76. Our star tonight is Edgar Barrier. He was a very successful Broadway actor before becoming a movie actor. He had a long career playing supporting and character parts and he died young at age 57. Tonight's supporting cast is absolutely superb. C. Aubrey Smith, Stephanie Batchelor, Lionel Atwill, John Abbott, they were all movie fixtures in B-movies. You'll recall seeing their faces many times. Let's return to 1944. Enjoy Secrets of Scotland Yard. In a few minutes, an armistice will be declared, and Germany will have lost the war. One of the reasons for our defeat was Room 40OB. For four years, 
our vital wireless messages coded and dispatched from this room have been intercepted and deciphered by this British department known as Room 40 in the old building of the Admiralty. But Germany will strike again. When that day comes, the mistakes of this war will not be repeated. We will plant one of our agents in the British code room, a secret agent who will be above suspicion. We will plant our seed today. Our agent must be cautiously picked, skillfully trained, and integrated into English life. From today on, I will live to prepare that man. The British will know my hatred. We shall defeat England and Room 40. I now call my people at home and my peoples across the seas who will make our cause their own. And the task will be hard. There may be dark days ahead and war can no longer be confined to the battlefield. If one and all, we keep resolutely faithful to it, ready for whatever service or sacrifice it may demand. And then, with God's help, we shall prevail. It's a naval code, Usher, in German. Well, I shall finish the frequency table in a minute. All right, Waffler. D. Uh, D. P. P. A. A. H. H. A. A. Well, that finishes the letters. What do you make of it, Waterlow? Oh, a normal language frequency, I'd say. Uh, do you think we ought to apply the language tests? No, I don't think so, Mason. The letters E, R, N, S, T are most often used in German. We'll assume it is German. And a transposition. What do you say, Hedley? Uh, uh, yes, I'd say it was written in German, and then they used a mathematical formula to jumble up the letters. Well, we'll know in a minute, Hedley. You know, the Germans never seem to realize that their letter C is almost always followed by an H or a K. That is true. Now, by their arrangement, the digraphs seem to be broken apart. Now, if we can find a mathematical formula for matching up the C's with their proper H's and K's, They've been repeating this particular message for the last two hours. Transmitted by their station, Deutschland Sender, 30 intercepts. Better have Usher get He's done it now. Of course, the repetition may be only a blind, with another message carrying the vital information. Well, I'll send Morgan over with the transcripts. Good. I expect your first day is a bit hectic, huh? I expect the first five years will be a bit hectic. <laughs> H, 81. C, 54. H, 90. C, 102. H, 102. I'll just come over from the Admiral there. They're worrying a lot about this delay. There are more intercepts. Look like repetitions. Sir Reginald's grasping like the devil. We're on the right track, sir. Good. If you just give us 20 more minutes. All right, I'll be in my office. Change course. Proceed. Course 63. Direction, Scarpa Flow. 
Minefields cleared. Sea chart 270. Concentrate attack on cruisers. Morgan. Uh, yes, sir? This is a dangerous business. If those U-boats get through the submarine nets... Give that to Sir Reginald Mead. Most immediate, most secret. Give it him personally. Very good, sir. They won't get through. Thanks to room 40. But what about tea? Whether the blasted U-boats get through the submarine nets or not, I want a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> try a little oh, sugar with it. Forty-eight hours, General Eberling, and you still have no word from London. How do we know your agent is in room 40? My plan cannot fail. Then why doesn't your agent let us know? What if you should fail after 21 years? Impossible. Every minute detail has been prepared. The message will come. Must come. Why do you challenge? It is not I who challenge, General. It is the fuel who challenges your acts, my acts, all of our acts. It was my recommendation that a parliament should arrange the integration of our agent into the British code room. If they had taken my advice... Yeah? Kirby speaking. Nine. No message. Yeah. Herr Himmler. General, if there's been a slip. If you're bringing us face to face with the disasters of the last war... This right? mistake will not be repeated. You may report that... Here's the proof. Sir Christopher Pell, the head of the code room, has been outwitted. My agent is at this moment in room 40. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler? They sunk the Athelia. What? The Athelia? Off the Everdees. With 1,400 aboard. She sailed from Glasgow with Canadians and some Americans. 200 miles off the Hebrides, an explosion tore her amidships. British destroyers taking the rescue to Greenock and Galway. 300 missing. We'll make them pay for it. Oh, this island's the safest place for an Englishman these days. All right. Hello, operator. This is a continental call. I want the St. Francis School, Bern, Switzerland. David Usher. How about your lad, David? I'm just calling him home, Morgan. The Nazis might invade Switzerland. You're quite right, sir. I remember the last time you brought him into this room. Poked his saucy little nose into everything he did. Asked a hundred questions. <laughs> He's going to be a great cryptographer. I uh, hope not, Morgan. Makes an old fossil of you. Well, it's done me no harm. <laughs> Hello, David. How are you? Hello, Father. I'm fine. But listen carefully. I want you to come home at once. But I'm all right here, Father. Now, I'll arrange everything with Herr Steiner. And I plan to leave tomorrow morning for Paris. I'll meet you there. Right? Yes, Father. I'm sorry to leave school and all my friends, but it'll be nice seeing you again. Goodbye, Father. It's been nice having a friend like you, Carl. I'm gonna miss all the fun we planned this year. Now we won't learn to ski. At least I won't. There's not enough snow in England for skiing. Well, that's too bad. Sometimes there's heavy snow in the country outside Berlin. Here, Carl, take my skis. There'll be something for you to remember me by. They're beauties. Thank you. You take my skates. Thanks. I'd like to think of you having fun with them. Carl, it luck. Hitler. Kyle, why aren't you back? We leave in 20 minutes. Yes, Father. Father, this is my best friend, David Usher. How do you do, sir? David Usher? Ah. Englander. We were going to have fun this winter, but now he has to go back to London. We'll write to each other, won't we, David? Yes. You will not write to the Englander. No letter from Germany will reach England after today. Hurry, hurry. The car is waiting to take it to the station. Yes, Father. I'm sorry, David, if my father offended you. That's all right, Carl. I suppose that's what war does to people. But we won't let it change us, will we? No, David, we won't. Maybe letters will go through Switzerland. I know. We'll write in code. In code? Here, I'll show you. Uh, I want to write. Just leave it, Dish. 
first I put down. The point is this. The Admiral thinks Miss Angel has an unusual cipher brain, and he's urging us to use her hair. We're tragically short of personnel, and here's a young lady whose training and brain will be invaluable to us. <laughs> I see you take to it as you would to smallpox. Well, I don't like women. What's the matter, Cope? I'm afraid she's going to hook you. I just don't like women in a man's office. Besides, I don't agree that they're good at this work. Well, women are good at making tea, Cope. <laughs> that ought to suit you. <laughs> if she comes here, we won't be able to swear it's usually. Oh, good thing, too. What do you think, Waterloo? Uh, uh, who, whose idea is it? Sir Reginald's or Miss Angel's? Uh, actually, it's Miss Angel's idea. She asked to be transferred to this department. Well, uh, frankly, I'm against it. The work tears you to pieces. The woman will crack up and let us down. Oh, you needn't worry about Miss Angel, Waterloo. I've known her for years, and she has plenty of nerve. I don't want to be personal, but aren't you engaged to her? Yes, I am. Well, of course, you'd like her in the room. I know Miss Angel's work, too. And I intend to bring her into the room. Knowing a person makes a lot of difference. I'm sure it will in this case. Well, that's that. Hello, Inspector. Oh, fingerprints, uh, eh? Christopher. Morning, gentlemen. Ah, oh, Inspector. Fingerprints. What do you take us for? A pack of highwaymen? All right, Dick Durbin. We take you first. Mm. Makes you feel like a murderer, eh? Like the fellow who drowned all his brides in the bar. Cope would probably drown his in a bowl of tea. <laughs> Very well, Cope. Filthy business. <laughs> now, Mr. Usher, if you don't mind. Right. Uh, you should have to miss that one. Accident, eh? Yes, shooting in Scotland a few years ago. Bevan, as a matter of fact. That's right. Sir Reginald, this is a most welcome surprise. It's been my one ambition to be attached to Room 40. I've always had you in mind for Room 40, Suzanne. In fact, I think the room is fortunate to get you. There's just one thing. I've been talking to the men. And, well, there's a feeling that a woman... Uh... Nonsense. Oh, I'll handle the matter tactfully. Miss Angel goes into the room. That's settled. Thank you, Sir Reginald. As you know, Miss Angel, the life and background of every one of us is checked by Scotland Yard. And Inspector Chambers may want to ask you a lot of personal questions. Of course. I think he'll find my life the proverbial open book. My father was an Egyptologist. I was born in the Sudan. That's how I got my name. And I have to warn you, room 40 is perhaps the most secret apartment of the government. Outside those four walls, no word of our work must be mentioned. In fact, no one must know you're in the room. I understand. Now, if you'll come with me, I'll introduce you to your new colleagues. Good luck, Suzanne. Thank you. Come in. Gentlemen, I want to introduce you. Colonel Headley, Mr. Bevan, Mr. Mason, Mr. Cope, Mr. Waterloo, John Asher, you know. Well, how do you like your new colleagues? I think I'm going to like you all. I'm glad you're here, Sudan. We need you. Thank you, John. We need someone like you to brew a good pot of tea. <laughs> I'll do my best at tea time. At all times, Colonel Headley. I'm sure you will. I'm very glad you're joining us. Thank you. I'm darn sure the rest of you didn't want me here. I hope you won't let the fact that I'm a woman upset your routine. Go ahead and swear and smoke your foul pipes all you want. I'll probably swear a bit myself now and then. Please think of me as one of you. We will. I'm sure we shall all work harmoniously. John Ash, I leave Miss Angel to your good graces. Thank you, Sir Christopher. I'll arrange the transfer immediately. You report here tomorrow morning. Good luck and good hunting. It was awfully good of you to help get me into the room. Well, not at all. You applied for the job, we needed you, and then here you are. But you did root for me, didn't you? Well, I made a very pretty speech about you right there. I'm sure you did. You know, this is a big moment for me. When I think of enemy messages being picked up by our listening stations and sent to this room to be deciphered... Oh, really, it isn't as exciting as all that. You know, Inspector Chambers will ask you a lot of questions about trips abroad, especially about any trips to Germany. I know, because he gave me quite a going over. But I've never been to Germany. Well, then tell him about the places you have been to. I'll tell him about the bars I've visited, the various cocktails I've drunk, and all the men who've tried to make love to me. Many? Dozens. I believe it. Don't let it ruin your life, John. There's only one man. <laughs> you will help me get started in the morning. 
Well, I'd love to, Sudan, but I'm going to Paris to get David. Oh, I will be glad to see him, but couldn't you send someone? It may be dangerous in Paris now. Dangerous? For you, I mean. Thinking of what you mean to this room. Oh, no, it'll be all right, Sudan. Nothing to worry about. Your cab, ma'am. Oh, all right. Uh, your cab's here, Mr. Usher. Right. Well, goodbye, Levy. I'll give your love to David. Uh, suppose I give him my love myself. All right, Stubborn, you'll give him your love yourself. <laughs> Just mind and bring him back safely from Paris. I will. You better answer it, Lippy. Yes? Oh, it's Sir Christopher. He says it's urgent. Yes, sir? Ah, John. By Jove, I'm glad I've got you. I want you to come along at once. But I was just leaving for Paris, sir. No, I'm sorry. Very sorry. But you'll have to cancel it. It's very important. Yes, sir. Well, Paris is off, Libby. I'll have to wire Steiner to have David sent along by himself. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, he'll be all right. Will I dismiss the cab? No, no. I'll take it to the office. They've changed the coat again. The Admiral's hammering at us, but we can't break it down. I am so genuinely sorry. Oh, you needn't worry about David, sir. He'll be all right. I know how much the boy means to you. But if you can break it down quickly, you can catch the evening train to Dover. Well, I wouldn't plan on anything until we find out what the enemy's up to. Are these the latest intercepts? Picked up by Lostov. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, good John. morning, John. Well, what have you tried so far? I think we're on the right track. we found this pattern of recurring groups. Is this the cipher or the recipher? Well, the recipher, the original was pretty badly jumbled. But why not separate them into vertical groups? And you add, you subtract, you multiply. Yeah. Fine. Sir Christopher, please. Oh, Christopher? I've been waiting for hours. How much longer? It's a very complicated change of code. We'll send it round directly it's broken down. Yes. If you're free, perhaps I'd better come round to see you. Good. We'll try transposing this group, Waterloo. Right. Let me see you. Will you take down these numbers? 26951. 2697. There's some tricks, some variations. They're hitting us with a new mathematical formula, but we'll get it. That's good. I have to see the Admiral. You're getting fidgety. Got to smooth him over. If you're through before I get back, will you phone me there at once? Right, sir. Good. Good luck. Au revoir, you fellas. Good, Good night. night. Good night, sir. Good night. Now, there's no sense in all of you staying, so Dan Waterloo and I can handle it. You trying to imply the rest of us can't be of any use? No, I didn't say that, Cope. But suppose we don't crack it. We may have to stay here all night, and you'll have to carry on in the morning. You'd better get your rest, all of you. Well, I hope we'll be given a chance for difficult jobs occasionally. Don't worry, Mason. There'll be plenty of difficult jobs ahead for all of us. Well, good night, then, John. Um, good night. Come on, Cope. I'll buy you a cup of tea. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Now, we'll take these separately. 97. 97. 58. 58. 87. 87. More tea, John? Oh, thank you. Why don't you get some rest, Sudan? You must be awfully tired. Don't you worry about me. Mr. Waterloo? Thank you, sir. Honestly, I do think you should take a rest. You know, you've been under a terrible strain. Thanks. I'll be all right. Have you seen the news? Destroyers sink attacking new boats outside Scarpa Flow. That was your work, John. It was a magnificent piece of deciphering. The Admiralty Communique says that they acted on certain information. A clever ruse. But I'm afraid the Admiralty isn't fooling the Wilhelmstrasse. The Nazis know the information came from this room. That's why they changed the code. Mm. Thank you, Walter. Don't mention it, sir. Now, we better get on with this. 87. 87. 60. 60. Well, that finishes that group. Oh, Sudan, will you check the alphabet tables against the numbers as Waterloo reads them, please? Ready? 31. G. G. 52. R. R. 83. A. A. 97. F. F. Graf. Graf. 
Now, the next group has four numbers, and the last two are 51, 51. Could that be spay? Must be. Let's try it. Graph. Spay. 51, that's an E. E. 74. M. Oh. Sudan. Well, you've overworked. Waterloo, why don't you call the taxi and take Miss Angel home? But John, now, uh, work here. Well, we've broken the code now. There's nothing left I can't do myself. Oh, I'll be all right. Or perhaps he's right, Miss Angel. It's only a matter now of translating the numbers into letters. I'll call a cab. The fresh air will do you good. After all those hours of Waterloo's pipe. But I'd rather stay, John. Nonsense. The cab will be here in a moment. Good luck in Paris. Thank you. Give my love to David. I will. There, Miss Angel. Good night. Good night. I'll be home if you need me. Right. Good night, Waterloo. Good night. Well, there's no good you're staying either, Morgan. I'll deliver the message myself. Oh, oh thank you, sir. Hey, give my best young David, won't you, sir? I will. I bet one of these days you'll be sitting one of those desks. Give mark my words. Good night, sir. <laughs> I'll be right over. I should have broken the code. Good. I speak to Mr. Robert Asher. Thank you. Robert? Good. This is Christopher Pelt. Can you come over to room 40 at once? It's very urgent. Thank you. Do you know of anyone who would want to take your brother's life? Well, no. There was no one else in the room. Unless, of course, the murderer was hiding there. But how could a Nazi agent gain access to the room? Could the murderer have been someone working in room 40? Working in the room? My staff? No, no. Impossible. Nevertheless, I think our first move will be to check every one of them. Well, uh, the men and Miss Angel. I take it you can dismiss Miss Angel from implication? I'm dismissing no one, Sir Christopher. Any one of them may have killed my brother. Or he might have been murdered by a foreign agent from the outside. But it must have been someone with full knowledge of room 40 and its workings. Someone who was able to gain access to the room while John was alone. Surely it's significant, Sir Christopher, that John was shot immediately after he had broken the Nazi code and before he could reveal it to you. Now, the murderer must have been someone from the room. It certainly looks like it. You know, sir, there's always a strong bond between twins. I love John. But more important than my brother's death is the fact that there's a desperate and cunning spy here in this most secret of government departments. By an act like this strikes at the safety of the island, at the heart of England. You must find him and destroy him as quickly as possible. That's why I sent for you, Robert. I shall have to regard every member of your staff as guilty until proven innocent. Miss Angel, too? 
Remember, she was engaged to marry John. Yes, I know, but I'm afraid we shall have to include her in our first checkup. As you will. Robert. Yes, sir? If John Usher were to come into room 40 tomorrow morning, take off his hat and coat, put his umbrella in the rack, take his seat at the desk and start it working, surely, if the criminal is one of my staff, he... Do you mean, sir, that you want me to take John's place? Yes. And I'd like to be in the room when you walk in. I'd like to be able to spot the reaction of every one of them. Well, do you think I could get away with it, sir? Of course, my work at the yard has given me some experience with cryptography. And if you'd help me over the bad spots... Well, I'd better show you the layout of the room. <laughs> Come on. We've got a busy evening in front of us. John, I hear you cracked the cipher last night. Mr. Dan. What happened, John? I thought you were in Paris. No, I couldn't make it. Oh, I see. I'm having Steiner send David along. He's old enough to travel by himself. John, can I have a minute with you? Yes, sir. Well, Sir Christopher? Mm, there was no definite reaction. Except, of course, for Cope with his matches and Morgan with his jigsaw puzzle. But remember, they all thought you were in Paris. Oh, the thunder might have startled them. Well, I'd soon know, sir. Now, we can take it for granted that the spy would have an ally here in London. Certainly. And that directly you break down a cipher here, the news is relayed to Berlin and they change their code, right? Of course. Scotland Yard knows the master Nazi agent here in London. It's advisable for us at the moment to give him plenty of rope. He's established himself very cleverly as Joseph, the proprietor of the Dalmatian Peasant, a little restaurant in Soho. Really? I've dined there. Well, then you know Joseph, sir? Oh, yes, I know Joseph, sir. You see, sir, if I can trace any connection between Joseph and room 40, I... What? You mean me? Well, sir, perhaps you'd be good enough to give me the address of Morgan's lodgings. I'll go there first. Certainly, yes. call for me today. Were you expecting someone? Yes. A man with a package. No, I don't think so. Wait, I'll ask Annie if there's a package. Oh, right down, Mr. Day.
Well, the note said report at once, and I suppose Morgan went to report. I lost him because of the fight on the roof. The point is, where did he go? To Joseph? I don't know. But who is the fellow on the roof? Well, probably one of Joseph's agents. Here's his gun. German Luger. We've got to know if Morgan went to the person. Well, where else would he go? Here I am, Sir Christopher. What do you want, Morgan? You sent for me, sir. No. But this note, sir. Note? What note? I found it on my bed, sir. Report at once. Strange, I thought, but I came straight away. We didn't send for you, Morgan. Someone else left that note. Who was it? I haven't the faintest idea. Could it be a joke? Could it be Toby, the landlady's boy? The little devil? Oh, I'm so sorry to disturb you, sir. That's all right, Morgan. Run along. Good night, sir. I am sorry, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Now, if he's innocent, why did Joseph send that man to kill me? Or could Morgan have reported to Joseph, and Joseph have sent him over here at once? That would account for his delay in arriving. Oh, I can't believe that Morgan... Well, whoever our man is, sir, uh, I'm afraid we're in for a bit of a shock. We've seen much of each other lately outside the room, have we? We used to have such fun together. John, have you completely forgotten that you're supposed to be in love with me? Why, Sudan, how could any man forget that? Now, that's really charming. That's much more like the man who asked me to marry him that wonderful summer at the lakes. Do you think we'll ever again have such a lovely holiday? John, what's the matter? You have been in a mood lately. Oh, Libby, the tea. I'm sorry, there's no pastries, but here's some scones I made this morning. Oh, Libby, I adore your scones. <laughs> Thanks, my dear. Lemon or milk? Lemon, of course. Of course, I'm sorry. John, have you seen Robert lately? Oh, yes. He's busier than ever now that war's been declared. Strange how much you two look alike, and yet psychologically you're so different. Yes, I suppose we are. Robert's so active, likes golf and cricket. Are you like burying yourself in studying, or a musty old game of chess? Why, Sudan, have I no virtues? Oh, yes, one or two obscure ones. Darling, you're a paragon, and I adore you. If only you didn't have a heart of stone. My Sudan, you know how I admire you. I don't want to be admired. I want to be loved. At least once a year, I want the man I love to kiss me. John. You'd better hurry, sir, or you'll miss David's train. Thank you, Libby. Why don't you wait, Sudan? I'd like you to be here when he comes home. Well, yes, I'd love to. Brave, David. Remember, your father died as a soldier would have died, serving his country. Yes, Uncle Robert. Oh, and something else. You've got to help me. What do you mean? You know how secret and important the work of Room 40 is, don't you? Yes. Whoever struck down your father was trying to destroy the work of the room. David, I've taken your father's place there. Everyone in the room believes that I'm John Usher the one who killed him. And that person is a dangerous secret agent. We're trying to discover who it is so the work can go on in safety. Now, do you understand? Yes, Uncle Robert, I understand. From now on, you've got to think of me as your father. Before Libby, before Miss Angel, before everyone. And you've got to be very, very careful. Never make a mistake. I'll do my best. Good lad. Hello, Libby. Oh, David, it's nice to have you home. David, I'm so glad to see you again. And I'm glad to see you, Miss Angel. What kind of a crossing did you have? Pretty rough. And you came all alone? Yes, I did. Where's Rolf? Oh, I'll get him, David, lad. He'll be glad to see you. He's been pining for you. Did you hate leaving school, David? Very much. I think all the boys did. Especially my friend Carl. We used to take wonderful trips together until his father took him back to Berlin. Carl, a German boy? Yes. Here's your old friend, David. Hello, <laughs> Papa. Maybe you better unpack David's things. <laughs> oh, <I'd> like that. <laughs> Tell me about your wonderful trips, David. Well, old Steiner took us to Oberammergau, where we met the people in the village, the ones that act in the passion play. And did he take you to Garmisch? No. Oh, what a pity. Garmisch is such a precious place with great pine trees and the Rote Hirsch where I stayed. I'm sorry we didn't make that trip. 
Oh, David, you'd better help Libby unpack. All right. Goodbye, Miss Angel. I'll see you soon, I hope. Indeed you will. Come on. Come on. I wish you'd have dinner with me, Sir Dan. Why, John, I'd love to. There's a little restaurant in Soho, an odd atmospheric place, the Dalmatian Peasant. Have you ever been there? No, I don't believe I have. I think you'll like it. Oh, John, I just remembered I have an engagement, Lady Hulgrave's party. I can't possibly go. You must forgive me. I'm late. I've got to run. I'm terribly sorry. Well, old boy, I'm going to beat your master tonight. Well, are you quite comfortable, sir? I'm sorry you've had such a long wait. Good heavens, Libby, he knows I always come this night. Oh, I know, sir, but he seemed a wee bit worried this last two days, kind of, oh, kind of absent-minded about the house. He's not like himself at all, sir. Oh, here he is now. Oh, Bevan. Oh, hello. John, where the devil have you been? Did you forget it was Thursday? Oh, thank you, Libby. Uh, I am sorry, but I see Libby's fixed you up with a drink, so perhaps you'll forgive me. Forgive you? <laughs> I'm going to beat you tonight, my lad. But don't you think it's a bit late for a game? Well, you don't think I've waited all this time just to wish you pleasant dreams, do you? Oh, very well, one game then. Yes, you know, I haven't forgotten that you've beaten me three times running. But this is my night. I've got it. Open. Well, what's the trouble, old boy? Settle down. That's funny. Never knew him to behave like that before. He's been acting a bit strangely lately. Hmm. Your move. What? Oh, yes, yes. Checkmate. You played a rotten game, John. That king move was atrocious. <laughs> What's happened to your technique? Well, you'll see next time we play. I'd better toddle along. I think it's uh, getting pretty late. Yes, it is. Well, I enjoyed the game. I told you I was going to win tonight. Good night. See you in the morning. Right. Good night. I went to play chess with him as usual. Uh -huh. He played a most atrocious game, but he nearly always beats me. Then his dog behaved in a most peculiar manner. He never went near John, and when John went over to pet him, he, he snapped at him. Oh, that's odd. But the most extraordinary thing is, well, you know that John's lost his finger. Uh -huh. Well, last night, when he went to rake the chess pieces into the box, I could swear his hand was as perfect as mine. Oh, no, you must be mistaken. No, I'm, I'm almost positive. Let's see, he's in with Sir Christopher now. We'll take a look at him when he comes out. Right. No, I can't believe that Miss Asia could have... Uh, I'm only too ready to agree with you, sir. But why did she swear in her credentials that she'd never been to Germany when she had? And why did she accept my dinner invitation and then refuse it when she learned I was taking her to the Dalmatian peasant? It'll be a tragic moment if I find that she's involved. Yes, sir. Well, what about Cope? I've learned that Cope dines regularly at the peasant. Coincidence? Oh, do you suspect? Well, I'll know tonight, sir. Cope is to be my guest tonight at the peasant. Unless he thinks better of it, like Miss Angel, and slips out. Oh, well, I'll be at home waiting to hear from you. Right, sir.
Maybe you'd better go in, Mr. Christopher, and tell him your suspicions. Oh, but if I am mistaken, I'd feel such a fool. Oh, bosh. Besides, Ash is a close friend of mine. Our work here is far too vital, too important to let the slightest of suspicion pass. Yes, I know, but... I'll see Sir Christopher. If you could examine his left hand, sir, you could assure yourself positively whether he is John Usher or some imposter. My dear Waterloo, I'm glad you reported this. I agree, we can't be too careful. But I happen to know that Bevan is mistaken. I've seen Usher's hand. The little finger is missing. As a matter of fact, his dog's been behaving strangely and bit his hand this morning. Well, I'm, I'm sorry if I... Not at all. You did quite right. Always report anything suspicious. Thank you. Oh, you must try some of Joseph's pate de foie gras. He still manages to get it flown in from Zagreb twice a week. Looks good. Gentlemen, it is good. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Joseph. Good evening. Just been telling my friend about your excellent pate. I hope you enjoy it, sir. It looks very good. Excellent. <clears throat> what do you think of the war, Joseph? Well, I believe this time the whole world will be in it. I've heard that before. No, I mean it. Russia, the United States, Japan. Oh, rubbish. You're letting your imagination work over time. But you will see, gentlemen. Oh, excuse me. Our chap. A strange character who likes to delve into world affairs, comes up with the most preposterous ideas. Yes, gentlemen. Oh, yes. What will you have to drink, Cope? Oh, you select, Jay, you a dry white wine, I should think. Yes, I think so. I'll be back in a moment. You'll have that Chablis 1934. Yes, sir. back there some time ago. Or probably telephoning. He'll be back, I'm sure. An Englishman came in here a while ago. Where is he? He's probably in East end. She's spending the weekend at Hazelmere. What was Mr. Cope doing here? I don't know. He arrived ten minutes ago, very agitated. I'd have shown him in here, but I heard voices, so I left him in the drawing room. Voices? Whose? I don't know. I saw nobody come or go. I didn't know Sir Christopher had a visitor. A moment later, Mr. Cope hurried from the library and said, Sir Christopher has just been killed. Hmm. That window's open, Stanton. Was it open immediately after dinner? No, sir. It was closed, I'm certain. Thank you. Oh, take over, Sergeant. Right, sir. Oh, Asha, you were here? No, I arrived a few minutes after it had happened. I came to see Sir Christopher on a private matter. Oh, uh, that window was found open. What happened at the restaurant? Oh, didn't you see that English waiter beckon me into the kitchen? I oh, know. But he warned me that Sir Christopher was in grave danger and urged me to come here. I ran through the rear and jumped into a taxi. That English waiter may be a key to this whole business. We'd better get back to the peasant at once. English waiter? I have no English waiter. But I spoke with him here in the kitchen before I left. I've never engaged an English waiter. 
The English make very bad waiters. Look about, do you see him? But confounded, I tell you, I talked with him. Don't you think I know my own countrymen? What have you done with him? Never mind, Cope. I'm sorry, Joseph. There must have been some stupid mistake. The pate was excellent. Thank you, sir. I hope you'll come back soon. Very soon. Come along, Cope. Back to your work. Uncle Robert. I'm sorry to wake you up, David. I was hoping you'd come. I'm proud of you, David. I think it's splendid the way you've been behaving. I'm sure neither Libby nor Miss Angel have any idea who I really am. I keep thinking of you every minute as my father. It's been another bad night, David. What happened? Do you remember meeting Sir Christopher Pelt the day your father brought you to the office? Yes. Sir Christopher's been killed, and probably by the same hand that killed your father. Sir Christopher, too? This whole business is coming to a head soon, though. Another day, 48 hours at the most, and we'll know. But who? With someone in the room, I'm positive. Now, when all this is over, we'll go away somewhere. I'm taking my week's leave, and I was thinking of going to Windermere, to the lakes. I'd love that. And is Miss Angel coming, too? Well, well, the important thing now is to get this business finished up. We've got our responsibilities, you and I. Got to see them through. I will, Uncle Robert. I know you will. Go back to sleep. Good night. Good night. Captain, we regret it deeply. But in time of war, we can't stop to ponder over yesterday. Enemy messages are pouring in hourly. We must intensify our work. From now on, Mr. Waterloo will be in charge. You will be responsible to him. Carry on. Thank you, sir. John, why Waterloo? Well, why not? He's brilliant. He's one of the cleverest minds we have. But you... Waterloo worked for years at the British Museum. John, about Sir Christopher. Could it have been a Nazi agent? Why do you say that? Oh, I don't know a feeling I have. The Nazis know how this room upset their plans during the last war. Don't you suppose they'll make a desperate effort to stop us now? Well, naturally, but how? A spy. Well, everyone's credentials have been checked and rechecked. A spy would be prepared for that. I'm afraid. Of what? Someone else may be killed. What do you mean? When they change the code again, it'd be the one who breaks the cipher. He'd be the one they'd want killed. It might be you, John. Well, it might be any of us. I'm sure Come in. What is it, John? I'm not John Usher. I... I beg your pardon? I'm not John Usher. I'm Robert, his brother. Well, what? Sir Christopher knew. Now that you're in charge, I must tell you. John is dead. Murdered. The latest intercept. Same code. They haven't changed. Yet. Of course, I had no idea of any of this. The man who struck down John must have killed Sir Christopher. Yes. Hmm. This is very, very grave. Uh, does anyone here suspect that you're not John Usher? No, not that I know of. One man does. Who? Bevan. The chess game. Oh, yes. He saw your little finger. It was clever of you to bandage your hand. So Bevan suspects. Well, there's still a doubt in his mind, but... I'll handle that. Asher, we must, between us, run this man to earth. Your brother's life is ended, Sir Christopher is gone. But the vital thing is our work, deciphering the intercepts. If you can stop this deadly interference... I have an idea that in a few days I'll be able to stop all the interference. Excellent. Converge on the drone singly, and not a word of the mission. Not even to your wives. Mine are still as as me in the Middle East. <laughs> My wife thinks I'm halfway to Singapore. Huh? Oh, Charlie, Mr. Reginald. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Langley. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Come in, Walter. Thank you, sir. 
Did you, uh, did you recognize those men? Isn't that General Sir Eric Holt and Admiral Langley? Yes. They're leaving on a plane tonight at 7 for Warsaw. Very important mission. If word gets to the Germans, they'll make a desperate effort to bring the plane down, either in flames or a forced landing, so they can capture these men. The German intercepts during the next few hours are the key to their safety, Waterloo. I want the transcript brought to me every 15 minutes. If there's a change in the code... I'll let you know immediately, sir. Good. More intercepts, sir. They've changed the code. We must break this down at once. No time after dinner. Morgan will get us coffee and sandwiches. Mason, get busy. Hello. Give us some Reginald mead, please. Um, Sir Reginald? Um, um, changed. Okay. Break it down. I must have it within an hour. Seven. That's the key, Waterloo. We can find out what that seven stands for. Dictionary number seven. No, no, no. I, I think you're wrong, Miss Angel. I still say it's dictionary. The smaller group here stands for A, and the larger group here for W, Y, or Z. That won't help us. If it's dictionary, the first three figures of each group would indicate the line. And the lines won't run to 96 or 98. There's no address or signature. It came in from Deutschland Center on a high arc. What's the Hun up to? That's what we have to find out. Cope, try the reverse. Miss Angel, try the language tests. What room? Here's the same message repeated four times within the last hour. We must read it, Waterloo. We will, sir. I'm positive the change was aimed at the plane and our men. Call me the moment you get it. Yes, sir. Nine oh four five six seven eight four six two north north seven north seven north eight nine north nine four nine nine six six four six nine four six four Miss Angel. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I Waterloo. No, no, let's go on. You look terribly tired. I think Miss Angel's all in. You better go home, you're worn out. No, I it was just for a moment. We may have to go on through the night. You won't be able to stand it. Well, I'd rather go on. Miss Angel, you must go home. Morgan, call a taxi. So silly of me. Really, I'm perfectly all The Sudan. What's the trouble? I came to tell you they've changed the code and we can't decipher. We've been at it for hours. Well, here, let me take your coat. You must be awfully tired. Whatever it is, it's frightfully serious. Sir Reginald's been waiting from minute to minute for the transcript. Well, how do the symbols run? In groups of five. The first group preceded by seven. I think it may be dictionary, but no one agrees with me. Of course, it could be a work of fiction. John, you've got to get back to the room at once. They need you desperately. If it is fiction, we'll never be able to crack it, unless we hit upon the particular book it is. Father. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Miss Angel. Hello, David. I just came down to say good night. Oh, good night, David. Good night. Don't sit up late reading. I won't. Good night, Miss Angel. Good night. Good night, Father. If we could only find out what book number seven stands for, we can solve it in short order. That sounds like the code Carl Everling gave me. Were you going to write to each other in code? Yes. We were going to use the storybook. Numbers for the words and pages. Our code was number seven, too. Well, what book did you use? It was a book Carl had. It belonged to his father. Well, how did Carl get the code? He took it from his father's desk. What was the name of the book? It was called Little Man, What Now? Sudan. The head of the German code department during the last war was called Karl Eitel Eberling. He reorganized their department and tried to devise a system of codes that we couldn't crack. He trained his son, Friedrich Eberling, to be a cryptographer. Friedrich Eberling must be little Karl's father. Of course. Little Karl poked his nose into his father's desk and just happened to come upon code number seven. John, there isn't a moment to lose. We've got to get a copy of that book and in the German original. Try Isaiah Tome, that little refugee bookseller. The one in Charing Cross Road? Yes. David and I'll wait for you. Right. Open up. Can't you see I'm closed up? What's the idea of getting me out of bed? Official business, Tom. Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? 
Oh, I didn't know. Come in. Come in. You brought along a great many German editions when you came into the country, didn't you, Tom? Yeah, yeah. Have you a copy of Hans Falada's Little Man What Now? Oh, I don't know. There's so many. Well, where are your German editions? Over there. Why did you do it, Tom? Only a fool would have done it. But when he found the book, I knew he had something against us. I warned you never to betray yourself. Where is he? Come, I'll show you. Good evening, Robert Asher. Joseph, we meet again. Sooner than I expected. Yes, thanks to this blunderer. It's not the way I like things handled. It's ungeschickt. Quite ungeschickt. Well, Joseph, now what? We know all about you, Robert Asher. You took your brother's place to avenge his death. Or shall I say to perform a noble deed in defense of your England? You were clever. You and Cope searched my restaurant. But did you find that English waiter? We have a way with those who betray us. All life is sorrow. London is a gracious city. And I had hoped to live here always. I have my little flat near Primrose Hill. Late at night, I like to walk there and look down on the roofs of London. I love the lights and the roar and the bigness of it. I love to hear Big Ben and to see the twilight coming down over Waterloo Bridge. I shall miss it, Asher. I shall miss it. Because this able little stupid thing and broke our lives. I have no choice now, Asher. It's either you or I. I had hoped that you might live to see the German victory. But now only one of us can celebrate that momentous day. They have been through it. I'm sorry, Asher. You might have been killed. This book is the key to those messages, Waterloo. Yes, we'll know everything in the next half hour. I'll send the others home. They're all played out. You and I will work this out together. Right. 21401, line 4, first word. It's Zuglich. 31202, 31, 31st page. Second line, second word. Get back. Get back. That's it, Waterloo. Dalmatian. Regarding English plane leaving for Warsaw this evening, execute instructions concerning luggage. Dalmatian. That's the address. That means Joseph. Rub it out, Asher. Of course. It was you who killed John. And Sir Christopher. Rub it out. You're a great race, you Nazis, when you've got guns in your hands. Without guns, what have you? For Europe, for the world, for yourselves. That's a brave speech for a man's last speech. You're so right. So sure of yourselves, you English. The only man who is right is a man with a gun. Why are you so contemptuous of the English? Aren't you English? English? My father, yes. I was born in Alexandria, but my mother was German. It'll do no harm to tell you now. Her name is Liesel Eberling. Eberling? The only one I ever loved was my German mother. The one point I overlooked, your mother. Colonel Eberling, Friedrich Eberling, Karl Eberling, Liesel Eberling, and now... Yes, Asher? We have the message. Dalmatian. Regarding English plane leaving for Warsaw this evening, execute instructions. Execute instructions 
concerning luggage. Yes, I sure. Luggage. I hope we can save that plane. Yes, sir. Get me communications. Urgent. Luggage dangerous. Discharge. Urgent. Luggage dangerous. Discharge. Put it through instantly. We must reach that plane. Right. There's a storm over the Baltic, but we'll do our best. Radio? Our task force might have depends on this meeting. Would you tell the... I don't so. Well, I, I'm not certain. transmissions already. Storm conditions can't guarantee. Well, keep sending. We've got to get through. It's urgent. Right? Calling plane 224. Calling plane 224. What are the brass hats doing? Maps and tea. I could do with a book. Calling plane 224. Urgent. Luggage dangerous. Discharge. Urgent. Luggage dangerous. Discharge. I'd better have a look. Right. Museum made him acceptable to room 40. Sudan, why did you swear you'd never been to Germany? I wanted so badly to get into the room. I felt it was the work I could do best in the war, and I was afraid they might reject me if they knew. Did you suspect me? Sometimes. Did you, Robert? I've known since that day David came home. David, I'm so terribly sorry. If there's anything I can do... David's going to stay with me now, aren't you, David? Yes, Uncle Robert. We'll work things out together. Of course we will. Schaefer, you see me, most of you see me, on YouTube hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And this shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies.
seems to have begun at just about the exact date you arrived here to settle down. In the last three weeks, two murders have occurred in our city. And you have been connected with each of them. We're being laughed at by every other city on the coast. You know, we could mean something to each other, really. The 5,000 didn't mean so much to you. Maybe, after I've cleared up a couple of murders. You and I could have a lot of fun. Isn't that something really worth working for? nice of you to cut me in on this. But if that trumpet's really rammed full of jewels, it'll be worth plenty. <laughs> it'll cost you much more than $5,000 to get it from me. I said, that's a pretty rotten trick, old boy. That's not cricket. How much of this is cricket and how much is racket? <laughs> what are you doing here? Would you mind very much, Mr. Shane, taking off your hat in the presence of a lady with a gun? <laughs> so you're the man I hired to protect me. <laughs> The various killings were all the young lady's fault. Oh, nonsense. Nonsense? Listen, Mr. Shane. So you have it all figured out, have you? Certainly. You crossed Travers in Hong Kong. You double-crossed Espinosa, and then you triple-crossed Torfaro. Pharaoh.